So on the saxophone, there are these axles or rods. That's what these things are. And when you press certain keys, they activate certain axles. The axles rotate and that's what activates the button. So this is the key to play C, the low C. It rotates this, there's a spring back here, and it activates the button here. Um, the idea is that I could transfer this angular rotation um, of the spinning of the axle to um, like a rotation in a different angle that onto a, like a paintbrush or some kind of colorful medium. I wanted to make this both accessible and quick and easy to prototype. I thought about 3D printing, but I only had a few days and even that was too long. So I went back to my childhood inspiration and used things like pipe cleaners, string, electrical tape, markers, and even better yet, the best thing for kinematics are connects themselves. I wanted to make something out of simple pieces that was by illusion complex, but in reality, even a child could make. So uh, I was thinking about using connects and I built this contraption here which represents the axle. So this stick would be the axle on the saxophone and there would be a stick coming out. This could be the paintbrush and the idea is that it spins and this white thing on the end would be the paint medium or the color, the marker striking across the canvas every time that note is played and there would be a different color matched up to each note and each rod on the saxophone. The problem I ran into is that these rods only rotate a very small amount, a very minimal amount, so you'd be getting like a small speck of color on the canvas. So I was trying to find a way through, um, I guess it would be mechanical engineering um, mechanics where you could transfer that uh, rotational energy into a larger rotational energy using gears. So um, it's a torque equation. So by striking that paintbrush, um, replacing that paintbrush with a gear on the end, you can strike another gear. And the idea is that this gear would be a larger gear on the other end. So we've got a small radius here and ideally a larger radius, so this represents a larger gear here. So you could replace this gear with a larger gear. You smi strike a large gear with a smaller gear, and on the other end you have the, the brush or the visual medium to make color, and it would strike a much larger um, surface area. The problem I'm running into here is how do you get this whole contraption condensed in a form that you could fit it onto the saxophone and still make it manageable enough that you could play it? I also decided to switch the gear system to a pulley system, which are essentially the same, only that the pulley system uses a chain rather than direct contact with the gear. But the kinematic equations remain the same. This allowed me to place the drawing mechanism, uh, the part that actually swipes the paintbrush or the marker across the surface of the canvas or paper to be further away from the saxophone itself. So this gives the player of the saxophone a little bit more room to play without the machine being in the way so much. I'm just gonna turn this manually. Yeah, so there's two problems. This chain is slipping, and also this this gear is just not turning with this. This gear is not turning with with the button. I think that's because we don't we we don't have a good connection here. So it's slipping here. This this arm this lever arm is slipping here, and it's also the chain is slipping. So we're gonna try to tackle those two problems. Large problem with this system is that there was no friction between the lever arm that met the axle on the saxophone. This was one of the most critical pieces I had to fix in the system. So before it would come out directly from here, 
directly from the axle arm and then we would spread out. But now we're coming down first and then spreading out. So I'm hoping that will minimize some of the slippage here so we don't have as much force um, weighing it down right away off of the axle arm. We're focusing on getting some friction here between the axle and this lever arm so that it doesn't slip. The other thing that was cool about this design is that I was able to um, bring the arm down and match the height here with the height of the gear so that um, you could reduce the amount of slipping on this end of the gear. So this design still isn't working great because I just think this gear is it's just not the right size still to produce a large enough stroke. So I'll show you. I'm going to press the key. I was able to simultaneously fix the friction problem at the saxophone's axle and the slipping of the chain on the gear by simply lowering the lever arm that came off of the axle on the saxophone. And this was able to sort of tag team both of those problems and allow me to press on to the next stage. <laughs> overcome the barrier of hooking up this large mechanical system to the saxophone while still making it manageable to play by simply keeping the saxophone on the stand. While it's not ideal, it works for the prototype of using it on a single axle. Ideally, I'd like to be able to make this on multiple axles and not just one in future work, but for the prototype of making it on one axle, it works for now.